Boom, it's your boy Chips Ahoy, it's your guy that praises the most high, Scott Stockton, and I'm coming back at you with another video. Today, I want to give you my review of the Canon RF 135 1.8 lens. Now, you'll notice I don't have it in front of me. That's because your boy had it for a brief time, and just as quickly as I got it is as quickly as I got rid of it, if that gives you any insight as to where this review is going to go. Uh, but without further ado, I want to talk about how this can be used for video, photo, and lastly, I really want to tell y'all about why I hate the 135 focal length the most out of any focal length. Let's roll into the review. All right, let's jump right into the review of this thing. Um, I'm going to touch on three things that I really liked about the lens. If I'm being honest, and I'll tell you this right up front, let's just, I'll give you the, the, the end of the review right up front. The lens itself is an amazing lens. If you like, <laughs> if you like to shoot with a 135, you're gonna love this lens. Best 135 I've ever used. I've used the Sigma 135, because y'all know your boy done jump ship from different brand to different brand. Shit, I might be shooting Panasonic next week. These are things we don't know, but my people that follow me out there, uh, Elmer, uh, Tristan, my gang out there that knows me, your boy be jumping from brand to brand. Yeah, as soon as something new comes out and it's better than the other one, that, that's like my, that's Scott Stockton's version of like a midlife crisis that seems to happen anytime new equipment comes out. Your boy could jump ship. And look at that. I'm on the highway and I just took a turn right off the exit to talk about shit that had nothing to do with this review. Let's get back to it. Okay, so of the 135s I've used, the Sigma, I've used the G Master. I've owned the Sigma and I've owned the G Master and then I had gotten the RF from Canon. Now we know Nikon doesn't have a 135, at least I've never seen it. And we're not even going to dive into the shit lenses that Fuji has. But of the 135s I've used, this is the best. Uh, I will show some images here. Uh, I used it on an engagement shoot. I used it a little bit around the house with, uh, with the kids and out in the backyard. And I took it with me to Elevation Church where I uh, shoot uh, the worship during every Sunday. Uh, so I used it in there which was a nice place to use it because you got some reach and because it's a 1.8 uh, lets in more light, uh, which means that, you know, if I, if I had I taken my 70 to 200 to do that at 2.8, I'd have to crank that ISO in a dark environment a lot more and, you know, possibly not get as clean of a, an image. So I did like the 138 in that setting. What I'm going to tell you about this lens is it's insanely sharp, stupid sharp, wide open at 1.8, the sharpness is amazing. Now, I, I'm not one of these nerds, again, that does the graphs, and I'm gonna take a photo of like some kind of color chart and then zoom in on the edges and tell you if it's edge-to-edge -edge sharpness. I think that's stupid. And for these nerds out there doing that, cut it out, stop that. Because all the photographers that you're appealing to, none of them shoot charts, bro. We out there shooting real people in the real world. Stop shooting the charts and get that shit outside in the real world on a real shoot. Then come back to us and talk to us about sharpness and all that silliness. Back to the 135. Sharpness, amazing. Another thing that I love about the lens is that it has, uh, it has stabilization inside the lens. Uh, that's pretty big because it's a big lens. It's a heavy lens. Uh, and if you're trying to let more light in and you need to uh, bring your shutter speed down to do so while keeping your shallow depth of field at 1.8, you're gonna be able to do that, especially paired, obviously, with the RF bodies, you're gonna get eight stops of uh, uh, stabilization. So you can shoot this guy uh, at really low shutter speeds and still get amazing shots. You can't do that with the Sigma, and you can't do that with the, um, uh, the G Master. Uh, this is the only one with uh, stabilization in the lens, which also is why it's a little bit bigger than the other two, but I like that. And it's got buttons on the side, programmable buttons. So the build quality of the lens is amazing. Uh, you got the stabilization inside, extremely sharp. And also, I love the colors that come out of this lens. Um, I, I think a lot of people would say that a lot of the RF lenses, the expensive, the, the, the L series lenses, uh, 
they tend to run a little cool. I felt like this one ran a little warmer and uh, overall was very pleased with the, the rendering, uh, the sharpness and everything that this lens had to offer. So as far as the lens goes, I think it's the best 135 out there. Now getting into my little ranty rant, I think the 135 millimeter focal length is the most bullshittest, horseshittest, pig shittest focal length in the world. And you know, I'm, I'm throwing out all the curse words today. It's just, for me, it's the dumbest focal length. I, I just don't get it. And there's people out there that are gonna, you know, they might, they might send abuse in the comments. I'm like, ah, well, you're, you're using it wrong. Or, ah, I love the 135. I, it's got the best, this, it. that's fine. Uh, you nerds can say whatever you want to. Uh, that's your prerogative. For me, I just think it's, a, I just think it's awful. Like if you have options, okay, the 70 to 200, way better than this 135. Honestly, at 200, at 2.8, you're getting a better looking bokeh than 135 at 1.8. I've seen so many comparisons on, on YouTube. I mean, I've done them, I've seen them myself. I have a 70 to 200 and at 200, 2.8, I think it looks way better than 135 at 1.8. Like you're, you're expecting, you know, maybe that this 1.8 is a, a lower f-stop than 2.8, 2.8, therefore the background is gonna look a lot better. Not the case. You get more compression at 200 and 2.8 is still, you know, still shallow depth at 200. So like, I just think that that image looks better. Um, also, like you limit yourself with the 135. You don't limit yourself with a 70 to 200. You can get closer and shoot at 70. You can have the flexibility to be able to ramp up from 70 to 200 if you need to, gives you that flexibility to be able to move around freely. With the 135, if you're trying to take in a whole scene, your ass gotta back up, daddy. You better back up. You ain't got no flexibility if you're trying to take in a whole scene. And then, if you t depending on how you're trying to take in a whole scene, it's either going to be extremely tight or you're going to have to back up enough to where like the background blur, for me, just isn't really there. And it's been like that since I've used any 135. I'm just not blown away by the background blur, the bokeh, like, the bouquet. I'm just not, I'm not blown away by it. Like, I, I'm just not. So you're, you, it's not flexible. I feel like a disconnect when I'm shooting, if I'm shooting a couple or a family or anything like that, that I have to be that far away if I'm not doing tight shots, if you're trying to take environmental shots. You gotta be so far away and then I, I think you create a disconnect between you and who you're shooting. Um, it might lower their confidence to see, you know, if, if you have the 135, they're watching this asshole backpedal, you know, all the way far away. He's, you know, if he's using flash, he's changing flash power, he's doing a test shot, he's doing all this stuff, and they're probably sitting there like, are we doing something wrong? They're losing confidence. I'm just not a fan of this 135 Fogo lens. For me, you know, the lens is, what, 21, 22, $2,300, something like that. For me, it's just a specialty lens. It's a specialty lens that somebody may grab once or twice. And I'm talking about for most shooters, for most shooters, if this is in your bag, let's say most wedding photographers, this is in your bag, you've got an array of lenses. I don't, I don't see people reaching for this that often to justify a price tag of, you know, $21 to $2,300, whatever it is. It's just silly. Like if you got the 70 to 200, why even reach for this guy? And that for me is like, if you're barely reaching for it and it's truly just a specialty lens, then what's the point in getting it? I'll be honest. Like when I went to, I flew up to Buffalo for an engagement shoot. I had the 135 on me, I had a 35, I had a 16, and I had the 51 too. I never found myself reaching for the 135. Like I tried to force it sometimes. I was like, well, I have the 135 on me, let me try to get a photo. And I felt myself forcing myself to use it and then having to get far back and do all this shenanigans, but I didn't like it. I preferred the 50 1.2 because I got to be closer and I got to interact more with my couples. So for me, the 135 focal length, shit focal length, um, yeah, specialty lens. I don't see you reaching for it much. Uh, disconnected with your people. And the bokeh for me is just average. It's just not that good, to be honest. So uh, there you have it. Yay, Canon RF 135, amazing lens. If you like 135s, go ahead and have at it. If you think it's bullshit like me, swerve it, daddy. Um, I know that this was more of a rant, 
more of a rant than a review, and that's fine. I'm picking up the 85 1.2 RF tomorrow. So this weekend, be looking for a vlog and a, a big adventurous photo shoot with this bad boy. I'll be slapping it up on YouTube. So in the meantime, you know the drill. Please like, please comment. I just said a lot of salacious shit about the 135. So if you agree or disagree, pipe it in the comments. Hit me with photos. Say, Scott, you're talking rubbish again. Look at this 135 shot I got. That's great. Let's have conversations. For me, it's bullshit. Thank you all for tuning in. Subscribe. Peace. Thanks for being on it.